At Thursday's Senate Agriculture Committee hearing, Senator Tina Smith asked nominees how the USDA can better connect with and help farmers of color. The hearing, in which nominees for the Department of Agriculture testified, focused on helping existing and aspiring farmers access capital and sell goods in a fair marketplace. Smith, a senator from Minnesota, noted the diversity of agricultural professionals within her state, with particular focus on Somali farmers. Minnesota has a large Somali population with tens of thousands of immigrants from the nation living in the Gopher State. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have Senator Smith and then Senator Fisher. Thank you, Madam Chair and Ranking Member, and thank you to all of our uh, nominees for being here today. Thank you for your willingness to serve and look forward to, um, look forward to supporting you. Um, I want to start out with a question that I almost always start out with. Um, Minnesota has a very diverse um, farm economy, including many Hmong, Native, um, Latino, Somali, and black farmers who play a really integral role in the farm economy in Minnesota, as well as in our small business sector. And yet I often hear um, that the USDA doesn't um, do enough to connect uh, with these farmers of colors and communities of farmers, um, com communities of color generally. So I always ask this question, um, which is what can the USDA do? What, you, what should the USDA be doing internally and externally to remove barriers facing farmers of color as well as business owners of color? And could all of you just address that um, briefly? I, I'll, I'll go up first, Senator Smith. Thank you for that. Uh, that really important question. Uh, in Oregon, um, at the Oregon Department of Agriculture, we've been investing a lot of our time in this space. How do we reach our producers of color? Um, one of the things uh, we have really discovered is there has to be an intentionality behind it. Uh, one example, we administer um, a small uh, equipment and infrastructure grant program for producers who want to get into the farm to school uh, program in Oregon. And uh, we, we realize there is also uh, a Somali agric small agricultural community. Um, what our staff decided to do one time on the announcement is actually translate that for them. And what we heard from community leaders was they had seen the grant before, they never felt like it was for them, and they put in an application because we had translated it. And so I think that intentional approach and engagement with those communi community leaders is so critical. And Thank should I be confirmed, I'm very interested in bringing that intentionality uh, to the programs of the Foreign Agricultural Service. Thank you. Would other panelists please comment? Thank you, Senator. Uh, um, you know, working with the states has been one of those things that I have had more fun with than ever in my, in my career. I was at CDC. I spent a long time in the states, uh, especially in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. They have the best group of people working over there on food safety and outbreak control. Uh, and, and you're right. Uh, I think that the, the efforts that we do locally are going to be reflecting on what happens at the nation. So, so what, you, what I would do if I were to have the honor of being confirmed is I would actually try to take all those things that we've learned from, from, from the, the, the state level or at the, at, the, at the federal level and bring it to the local level. If that includes tra translation of materials, making them available, hands-on training, having uh, open houses, all those things are tools that the closer we get to that community, the more effective we are with the, those messages. The bottom line should be that the food should be safe. And so by getting to them, they, they will learn and then there'll be a food culture and that will evolve into a much larger, larger uh, productivity cycle. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Yes, uh, Senator, thank you for that question. Um, if I have the honor of being confirmed to this position with the FCA, I will um, look at various ways of addressing people who are underserved, of course. I, I'm Native American. I know, the, I know the struggle that tribal and individual Native American farmers and ranchers have in the access to capital. I'm going to ensure that the system is safe and sound, but it also has to be equitable. Mm -hmm. And I think we all agree on that for the strength of the country and, and uh, for the strength of feeding people. Um, USDA aside, you know, I, I will personally, you know, work with anyone if I am confirmed to run new ideas for addressing farmers of color and and in particular, of course, with the community that I know well, Native America. Thank you very much. 
Um, thank you. Um, Dr. Esteban, um, I am um, very supportive of the Biden administration's and, um, actions and this Congress's actions to increase investment and support for small meat and poultry processing. The concerns that we have about the intense consolidation in the processing sector and how that not only, and what the implications for that um, across the, the whole range of, um, whole range of areas, including food safety, but um, so, and I, I want to just um, come to the question specifically of expanding access to food processing for tribal governments. This is an area of, of, of real interest um, for Minnesota's um, sovereign tribal nations. So, Dr. Esteban, could you talk about how the food safety, um, the food safety inspection service has broad discretion here to work with processing plants of all sizes? Can you commit to me that, if confirmed, that you would work with tribal governments? Um, through the process of assisting them as they set up and operate and inspect their own meat processing facilities. Uh, th thank you, Senator. And uh, I think what you just described is actually the, the way FSIS already works. We are very committed to helping th those small and medium-sized plants to build up. Uh, there's no reason that the size should matter in how we treat them. With this small or large producer, they're as important because they're contributing to that local economy. So, so I will commit to you that, that the FSIS will work making no difference regardless of size on how we treat any of the stakeholders. The food should be safe, the employees should be, should, should, the employees should be safe, and the business should be viable. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Senator Fisher. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Taylor, it was nice to meet with you yesterday, and I um, appreciated the conversation we had about expanding trade, getting into trade agreements, how important uh, the export